<laughs> oh, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm going away now with my video. Is that that's, 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 God, well, like everybody see you, John. Good to no, no. <laughs> if you curve it a little bit more, you can turn into Phantom of the Opera, though. So you got to make it just kind of a little bit different. It's a tough group. Yes, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Okay. See you later. Take care, right, John. Bye. Oh, I'm staying. I'm just not going to be videoed. <laughs> we can won't see, see you later. We can keep talking about you then. Yeah. Oh, I can hear, you know, my ears are okay. <laughs> uh, you're, you're better so, off than I am. <laughs> David, it's good to hear you. We see you as good well as uh, all the rest. Well, I was, here, we, I was here a week ago with a number of other people. There were about five or six of us that logged in because we, we missed the memo somehow that we were <laughs> meeting. And uh, oh. <laughs> one of us had actually gone down to the club and of course it was locked up tighter than a drum. So we figured we got we got extra credit for a meeting. Well, you better make yeah, sure, well, yeah, make sure you get meeting credit for that. Yeah. What's happened to the attendance uh, obligations? Exactly. Um, used to be that people were trying for 100 percent. Now I don't know. Three meetings and you were out was the rule uh, back in eighty <clears> one. <throat> Nineteen eighty one is when I first joined Rotary in Northfield, Minnesota. And that year, we voted to allow women to become members, uh, contrary to the national uh, international standards. I miss that whenever you are. Is this? Yeah, you know, I think. Where would we be if, if that hadn't happened? Huh? Good morning, City of Lakes Rotary. What a huge crowd we have here today! <laughs> it's the hail the hardy uh, Rotarians here at City of Lakes. Let's open with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the four-way test, in the things we think, say, and do, one, is it the truth? Two, is it fair to all concerned? Three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Four. Will it be beneficial to all concerned? I have Todd Marshall down for the reflection. Is Todd online today? Todd, welcome. Oh, can you guys hear me? There we go. Now we can hear you, Todd. Now, okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so um, <laughs> good morning, everybody. It was. Yeah, it's exciting to kind of pipe in from up north. I got a, a cold sensor call at my lake place where the, the temperature was plunging and I realized my furnace was out. So I had to make it impromptu drive up north to get things squared away. So I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing in from, from Crosby, Minnesota. The, uh, you know, I was reflecting on the drive up what I wanted to share this morning and it dawned on me that this is the first Rotary Club meeting after the new year. And I'm like, oh boy, there's a lot of pressure with that because there's lots of reflections about last year, New Year's resolutions and that kind of thing. And then I just decided I'm not gonna do that because whenever I've tried to sort of go down the path of resolutions and reflections, I always fail. Right? So, somehow it just does not come through for me. So what I would like to share a little bit about is a recent trip to Puerto Rico. Uh, so over the Christmas break, Linda and I took our two boys, Will and Andrew, uh, to Puerto Rico. And, you know, we spent a decent amount of time sweating some of the details about, you know, where to stay and what to do and where to go. And we even kind of booked a, a super nice restaurant um, for dinner on the day that we arrived. And we went and it was quite lovely and the service was nice and the food was great. And then uh, over the next uh, four or five days, we proceeded to go to a beach into the jungle and old San Juan and up in the mountains and and you realize how, uh, how much Puerto Rico is still recovering from the hurricane of you know, three or four years ago. And they're still um, really suffering from an infrastructure standpoint and even impacting some of the tourist business. And, um, and even as we did all of those things, um, you know, the last night we were there, I asked the boys, I said, hey, what, what have you enjoyed the most about you know, the trip? And what was really telling about their statement is they said, hey, uh, we loved going to that river and just jumping off the rocks into the water. 
Uh, we loved stopping at that roadside barbecue joint up in the mountains where we paid $4 for some suckling pig. Um, now, whether it was safe to eat or not, it's a different question, but it was really <laughs> a terrific lunch. And, uh, and they liked streaming the Timberwolves basketball game in, in our hotel. And, and when I really just reflect on, on what that meant to them, it was simple things, simple joys, uh, the being together um, that mattered to them. And it wasn't the, the nicest or the flashiest or the most expensive things, but in some respects, it was the things that were really simple. And for me, it was just a great reminder that sometimes simple is better, right? And, and to express and find goodness in the simple things in life and the things that bring us together in small ways um, can be a really good thing to remember and a good reminder for all of us, I suppose, to you know, not sweat the things that, uh, that we can't control and it doesn't have to be big or flashy or nice or expensive to be something that's, uh, that you can take joy from. So I just wanted to share you know, that reflection from a recent trip and to wish all of you a very happy, uh, prosperous and healthy new year. Thank you, Todd. All right, uh, Russ, you have the song this morning. Thank you. Uh, following up on Todd, we're gonna sing a song together. So if everybody would please rise uh, and, uh, but it's not gonna be simple like Todd suggested. It's gonna be a little complex. We're gonna sing, let it snow. <coughs> Those that are here and we're gonna sing it in a round. And we're gonna have the people at home sing as well. So if everybody at home would unmute, this is not gonna be simple. Well, what I'll do is I'll start off this group over here. Okay, let's do it right down the line. You two guys go with this group. You guys go over here. This will be the second group. And at home, you will be the third group. And I'll help you. Now the words are, oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we have no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. So if you don't get anything else right, <coughs> Get to let us snow right, okay? <laughs> Let's start over here. Ready to go? Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we don't place to go, let us snow, let us snow. Another time. Oh, the weather outside. Oh, the weather outside is frightful. Oh, the weather outside is bright, 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 I was worried about a disaster striking on that one. All right, good job, Russ, thank you, thank you. Ah, now, I don't think we have any guests or visiting Rotarians here, but we may have some guests online, and uh, Ross, maybe you can help me and see if we have guests online. Addie Cross is here. Addie, welcome. And Jim, why don't we do our announcement now about Addie's fabulous news? Uh, I'm going to let Jim start, Addie, and then we'll have you fill in. Uh, okay, welcome. Uh, hi, Addie. And uh, we have great news for those of you that may not know that have been following the path of Addie's life with uh, City of Lakes over the last few months. She did win a global grant, and that's a great, uh, a great honor. And I, to cut to the chase, I think there's something like $25,000 involved over a two year period nice. uh, to help her do her next, uh, facilitate her next uh, important step in her life plan, which is to continue to do what she's done over the last several years in her young life, and that's make a difference in the people she touches. So uh, 
Addie, why don't you share a little bit about your experience in the interview process uh, as you learn more about Rotary and share more importantly what your life's going to look like over the next uh, few months and then as you look toward the fall and, and I, I would guess the official launch of your program. Thanks so much, Jim. And first of all, just a big thank you to City of Lakes Rotary for being willing to jump on board this process with me. Um, special thanks, obviously, to Jim Eaton for helping me through the application process and also Rob Scarlett for kind of accompanying um, the entire process as well. It wasn't an easy application. Um, I had to really detail everything that I was interested in and it wasn't an easy interview. It was a Zoom interview, which I, I really don't prefer, but I know that that's how things are right now. Um, so it was a Zoom panel interview. So I was in my little square and then had all of the interviewers um, around me. So um, it was an interview at the district level. And I, I kind of, I walked out of, I guess I didn't walk out of the interview. I, I pressed leave from my interview. <laughs> Um, thinking that I did all right, but that it wasn't the best interview um, that I'd ever given. So I really wasn't sure um, when I would hear back and what I would hear back, but I heard back on December 23rd, um, which was just a brilliant Christmas present. And I was able to tell my whole family about it um, on Christmas day, which was wonderful. Um, it was kind of funny because my grandpa was upset that I hadn't told him sooner. Um, he wanted me to call him right away. But um, I, uh, the, so in the next few months here, I'm a little bit scattered these days because I am leaving for the United Arab Emirates on Friday. I'll be representing the oh, well, Minnesota and the United States at the, what, the World Expo in Dubai. Um, and so I'll be there until um, April of 2022. Um, I'm also going to be working towards supporting the Minnesota bid to host the World Expo in, or the Specialized Expo in 2027. Um, and so I'll be there and then I should come back to Minnesota in the spring. And then I'm hoping to begin a graduate program in the fall with the Rotary Global Grant. And so that grad program will most likely be in Scotland or Germany. Um, I've been accepted to St. Andrews University in Scotland, which I'm very excited for. Um, there I would be choosing a program in social anthropology. So um, I'm still waiting to hear back from the school in Germany before I make my final decision, but I'll definitely keep the club updated. And one of the nice things about the Rotary Global Grant is that I'll be giving um, quarterly and final reports, and then I'll also be connected with a Rotary Club in the community where I decide to go to grad school. So um, this isn't the last that you'll see of me, and I'll be working towards um, for forming collaboration between um, City of Lakes Rotary Club and then um, the Rotary Club in the community of um, my grad school of choice. So thank you so much again for um, jumping on board this process with me and um, stay warm out there. with us. Addie, anything else to add? That's all I've got today. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Thank you and congratulations. It's great. All right. We're going to move on to announcements. I know Gail Noakes has an announcement this morning. Gail. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, just want to remind you next week on Thursday, we have our monthly peer group and um, Sean Irwin is going to be leading the discussion on how to uh, plan uh, an, uh, uh, an ex and to be able to exit a business or taking a gap of time out of your business. So it should be a very interesting topic. Um, we meet at uh, seven to eight Thursday morning on Zoom. And again, we always get a lot out of the conversation. So if you don't have the link and you'd like to join us, let me know, Gail Noakes 
gail at gailnokes.com. Thanks, Scott. Great, thank you, Gail. Uh, Matthew Prediger has an announcement. Matthew. Good morning, City of Lakers, and Happy New Year. It's time to announce December's winner for bringing the most guests to our meetings last month. Congratulations to our club president, Scott Benson. <laughs> yeah. Scott made a selection from an assortment of prizes, rotary swag and gift cards from local businesses. He's our prize winner. Um, so congratulations again to Scott, uh, our winner. And I want everyone, I don't know if you can hear the song with my toddler screaming in the background. <laughs> I want everyone to imagine a club with even more beautiful members who want to make a positive impact in our community and communities that need our help. So um, we're off and running for January. No guests today, but <laughs> but it's going to be an exciting month with Sharon Bloodworth giving the financial forecast and Mayor Jacob Fry is lined up to speak. So um, help us grow our club by inviting guests uh, this month. Thanks so much. Thank you, Matthew. And, and I'm really happy to have won that. It, you know, it was a tough competition. So, all right. Are there any other announcements? All right, seeing none, we will move on. Today is our annual meeting day, in addition to being kind of uh, uh, getting apprised of where we're at at our halfway point. And I'm gonna call up our president-elect, Ross Naylor, to introduce his slate of officers and, uh, and uh, directors and uh, committee chairs. So we're gonna move up and put that up uh, so you all can see it while uh, Ross runs through it. And Ross, I will. <laughs> Great, thank you. And I have it up here if you want to read it also. All right, thanks, Scott. Um, so today, as, as Scott mentioned, uh, we are going to vote on next year's slate. And you can see it on the screen here, but uh, myself as president, uh, I read this uh, a few weeks ago, but uh, past president Scott, uh, president-elect Jean, um, vice president membership chair, Sean Irwin, um, membership co-chair, Claire Burkett, um, treasurer, Sheila Gothman, and then uh, finance assistant treasurer, Cindy Lenny, both uh, supporting again, which is awesome, thank you. Um, secretary, Lisa Moncrief, uh, Sergeant in Arms, Doug Schmidt and Kurt Nelson. Oh. <laughs> club Administrator, Steve Morris. Uh, Assistant Club Administrator, Dick Mossman. Um, special Projects, Gail Noakes again. Thank you, Gail. Uh, foundation Chair and Foundation Co-Chair, Bill Klein and Bob Baker. Um, at it again, thanks so much for your work. Um, programs Committee Chair, Carol Russell. Assistant programs, Matt, oh, I'm sorry, Mary Pat Cumming and Daniel Codette. Um, at large uh, public image chair, Brock Ray. At large, uh, uh, Maria Bavender. Um, at large district liaison strategy, Carol Russell and webmaster Brock Gray. And then uh, the avenues of service. We have a community service chair, Jody Massey. Assistant community service, Lynn Otis. Thank you, Lynn. Um, international service chair, Rob Scarlett. Assistant International Service, we're still waiting to fill that slot. Um, vocational Service Chair, Jonathan Hobbs. Assistant Vocational Service, our new member, Andrew Hoffman. Um, Club, Club Service Chair, Matthew Prediger. And Assistant Club Service, Ada Kunle Samuel. So this is where, I don't know if you want to take the vote or am I to do that? Yeah. yeah. So we, we, uh, uh, we want to vote today. Um, so uh, I guess, are there any motions to approve this <laughs> slate? <laughs> Any, and a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you. Congratulations, everybody. And thank you all so much for being uh, willing to serve your Rotary Club. We really do appreciate it. We're going to hear a lot about the service that people are doing this year. Uh, as Doug Schmidt pointed out, it's like, uh, I'm hardly doing anything. I'm farming everything out to everybody else uh, in the presentation today as we uh, do our check on where we're at halfway through our rotary year. So just to uh, recap, of course, the uh, Rotary International theme for the year is serve to change lives. 
And interestingly enough, if you look on our website, which is the next slide, uh, our website, of course, reflects that, that we want to be the change, elevate your city, elevate yourself here at the uh, Minneapolis City of Lakes Club. Now, our uh, president of Rotary International, uh, Mr. Shaker Mehta, spoke to us, as you'll recall, uh, at our September 15th meeting, being beamed in uh, via Zoom uh, in a pre-recorded message. I'm sorry, it wasn't just for us, but, everybody, but you know, he beamed in, it was fabulous, uh, and, and noted in a very positive message that we have the power and the magic to serve to change lives. Um, Mr. Mehta really got off to a great start of his rotary year. I, on the other hand, did not get off on such a great start of my rotary year. This is me on June 30th uh, and about to take office on July 1st. Uh, I was supposed to do an Ironman uh, training, ended up uh, having to have double bypass surgery, but Instead of doing an Iron Man, I got an Iron Man action figure. Um, so that was the start of my rotary year. But luckily, we uh, have a great club, and people step up. And, and Carol uh, stepped up, uh, engaged for another month, uh, added on to her presidency, uh, and did a fabulous job. Probably the biggest news of the start of our rotary year uh, was moving to the women's club. Uh, and here we are at that first meeting at the Women's Club, cutting the ribbon, Carol uh, acting as president, cutting the ribbon as we came to the Women's Club. And uh, looking at the next slide, uh, from our Pulse survey, I think our experience at the Women's Club has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, as you can see, uh, the blue is excellent, the red is very good, the, the green is good. Uh, it, it looks like by and large, we have had a great experience here at the Women's Club, and we really appreciate the service that we've received here and the really warm welcome that we've received at the Women's Club. So I wanted to touch a bit again on our strategic plan and, and, and talk about some of the accomplishments we've seen so far this year and where we still have some challenges to go. Uh, you'll see on the next slide, uh, we set a three-year strategic plan, uh, fiscal years 21 through 23, and we have four major priorities, member growth, member experience, reputation, and impact. Uh, those are the three, or the four things, rather, that we are focused on achieving in the next three years. Can the, can the slides be shared with those of us who are online? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, are you seeing them now? Very good. We have them on. Sorry about that. You know, we're all kind of learning. Uh, Brock is gone today, so we're all kind of learning how to do this. And Ross, you're doing a great job. Uh, so the first two categories, here are our yearly membership goals. Uh, first in member growth to attract diverse members by consistently serving and being recognized in our local community so that our membership is reflective of the population of Minneapolis. Second, to increase membership uh, to 95 members by year end fiscal year 2022. We're gonna hear more of that uh, from the membership committee report as to where we stand there. Everyone bring one. Hey, I got my... I got mine. How are you guys doing? I know some of you are doing very well. Yeah, but we have spectacular prizes. I don't know, just don't, don't wait, bring them now. Um, and then under member experience, uh, increase awareness and knowledge of uh, member professional capabilities and interests. And our vocational team is really doing a great job with that. And we'll hear more about that soon. Uh, create member tools to easily make referrals, ask advice, and promote available opportunities. Again, we've had great uh, success in that realm as well. Uh, the vocational committee has worked very hard at doing that. Engage and inspire members via dynam uh, dynamic club programs. We'll hear more about that soon. And increase meeting attendance and satisfaction and develop club personas and a specific plan to target their desired member experience. Well, how are we doing with uh, uh, that? Uh, measure. Here is our latest uh, uh, poll 
uh, that we just did in uh, end of December, early January, very early January, <laughs> mostly end of December. Uh, how satisfied have you been with your experience as a member of City Lakes over the past calendar year? And we see that we uh, have 59% extremely satisfied on the 10 scale uh, and 16% at nine, 8% at eight, et cetera. Uh, our goal is to have everybody move into those higher categories. Uh, so we, we hope to uh, see that progress over the year. Um, it's interesting to look and see what the primary purpose for joining our club was. And, and that hasn't changed much between 2020 and 2021. Uh, you'll see the majority of people joined for networking, uh, 47%. That's up from 38% in 2020. Uh, and uh, also personal development has gained significantly in, in a year, uh, going from 2% to 9%. But these are fairly consistent uh, over the past few years when we've been doing these surveys. But as we see in the next slide, uh, with the following, have you participated in, in Rotary over the past year? 91% of our members have been engaged in service projects, 43% uh, in international, 76% in a leadership role, 88% in committee participation, 97% in social events. Again, increasing almost in every category across the board over the past year. And I attribute that, of course, to uh, COVID somewhat receding over the past year that we've seen more participation over this year. Of course, we have had some spectacular programs and I want to thank uh, uh, Karen and the programs committee for bringing in some really great speakers throughout this year. Uh, and they're continuing to go forward. We have some great programs as Matthew pointed out in, in January and throughout the next year. So thank you to the programs committee for all the good work you have done. One of the other measures that we've used over time uh, to gauge kind of member satisfaction is, is this question, uh, how willing would you be to refer Minneapolis City of the Lakes Rotary Club to a friend or colleague? And I, it, it's interesting to look at how this has progressed over the past year. Uh, as we've gone through kind of not having live meetings through COVID and then coming back again. In August of 2020, uh, you could see, and, and the measure that we go for here is the net promoter score of 81. Uh, we had a net promoter score of 81, which is very good as of August of 2020. Going forward into January of 2021, we see the net promoter score decreased a little bit slightly uh, to 78. Then moving forward to uh, the uh, May of 2021. So now after almost a year of having uh, meetings exclusively via uh, Zoom, we see the net promoter score drop to 61 uh, as of May of 2021. August of 2021, uh, the net promoter score dropped to 58. So again, we've seen a continual dropping of that score as we've gone through COVID. But the good news is in our latest uh, survey, the net promoter score went back up again to 74% as we're having more live interaction with your friends and colleagues here in your Rotary Club, which of course is really important for uh, Rotary Club as a whole to have that interaction. Uh, so between January, 2021 and January, 2022, the net promoter score is at uh, slightly declined at, at four points less than it was before. And as you can see, this next uh, uh, chart kind of shows where our net promoter score has gone over the course of the last couple of years. Uh, the next two goals that we have for this year, uh, reputation. So develop a close and collaborative working relationship with other clubs improve uh, City of Lakes Rotary Club's brand image showing that we live our values and further leverage social media to enhance club reputation, networking and coordinating our efforts for the greatest impact. And then under impact or service, further define service area focus and initiatives coordinated uh, for the greatest impact, project activity shared quarterly with members and finding opportunities for every member to participate in at least one service project. And I think we saw in that 
uh, uh, graph that we saw earlier that we have reached 98%. We got to get to 100 at some point. Uh, and at least one annual fundraising project that engages and leverages non-rotary contributions. Uh, I'm happy to report that the past President's Council has met and talked about that. Uh, Carol Russell is heading that up. Uh, and, and Carol tells me that they expect to have an announcement in the next month or so as to what that project will be. I want to point out the great work that Carol Russell has done uh, in working with our Minneapolis Rotary Clubs to really promote Rotary as a whole. Um, if you have a chance, plug into your Google uh, Minneapolis Rotary Clubs and you will see a joint page uh, th this is one of the uh, uh, things that you'll see, but, but it's a very dynamic page. It, it's, a, it's just fabulous work, promoting all six of our Rotary Clubs in Minneapolis. Um, and you can click on and see which uh, Rotary Club meets at a time that's best for you. Click to their website. It really is a fantastic tool that's been developed in cooperatively with our uh, fellow Rotary Clubs in Minneapolis. Um, it, you know, it just happens that Minneapolis City of Lakes is the first one on the list, but you know, I, I'm sure that wasn't point in any way. Uh, uh, going on to uh, other reputation and impact, I just was really touched by this note that we received uh, from Junior Achievement. I don't know if you had a chance to read it, but it was a fabulous note. Uh, based on Joyce Agnew's contribution and the club's, uh, Joyce giving $30,000, the club's regular $5,000 contribution, they, they noted that your investment will have an immediate impact on junior achievement in our students and said, we will continue the vital work of empowering students to dream big. Uh, this was a huge, huge thing that happened this year. It really enhanced our reputation and impact uh, with, with junior achievement and the work that they are doing. But we did a whole host of other things this year as well. Uh, the raking project, uh, 35, I think, members showed up for the raking project, a regular CES. Now that was an old CES picture because now we can only have eight people, I think, come at a time. But uh, our CES food shelf project, our warm hands, warm hearts project, again, all of those things, tremendously successful, more gloves and hats than we've ever been able to provide in the past, thanks to real generous contributions, both at, at, on the foundation level, of course, and then from uh, our Happy Bucks campaign that Gary Mosman spearheaded to make sure that we could do more this year. Um, and then of course, the obligatory shot of us eating at Matt's. Uh, I didn't get the dripping uh, burger picture. I thought maybe that was a little more to, that we could stomach this morning. Uh, and, and of course, we celebrated our achievements. Uh, our our uh, winner of the Heart of Rotary Award, uh, Jonathan Hobbs, of course, and Rob Scarlett getting the Dick Parrish Award. Uh, and then our, our Black Men Teach Twin Cities, uh, the our, our award that went to them as well. And Marcus Flynn uh, spoke with us a few weeks back uh, and detailed the great work that they're doing and the work that they'll continue to do based on the help that we gave them this year. I also wanted to point out, this is last year's certificate that I just got in the mail, um, but we'll get one this year too, uh, for our contributions to uh, the uh, uh, Polio Plus campaign and the great work that this club has done there, every year meeting our, our goal. Uh, and we do that both through contributions uh, that, we, that we get uh, from uh, our, our happy bucks, but also from contributions that we get from the Minnesota Iowa game. And here's a really good uh, uh, example of where we have worked and coordinated with other clubs. The Cedar Rapids Club was foolish enough to uh, accept our challenge to see who could raise the most per capita uh, in the Minnesota-Iowa game. Uh, and of course we won. I mean, Minnesota didn't win the game, but we won this Floyd of Rosedale uh, replica statue. Uh, yes, yes, worth celebrating. It's sitting in Kurt Nelson's office right now. Um, I, I suggested to Kurt that maybe he might bring it back so we could admire it here every now and then. Uh, but 
great picture of Floyd of, of Rosedale uh, that we can celebrate. Uh, but on a serious note, uh, together, our clubs raised almost $10,000 for Polio Plus just from that game effort. So to Bob and to Kurt and, and, and everyone who's been involved in the Minnesota-Iowa game, thank you very much. Uh, we really do appreciate it. All right. Um, that, see, I'm telling you, that's me. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't do any of these things. I'm just reporting what the, no, I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just reporting what club members did. I'm gonna turn it over to Sheila now to talk about the, uh, where we stand budget-wise uh, with the club at this state of being halfway through the year, Sheila. Good, good morning. Can, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, actually, I had not put up that um, slide. I think that's Bob Baker's slide. So you can um, stop sharing the screen. My presentation will be very short. I want to give a short um, and brief uh, report on the foundation account. So as you know, we have two um, entities. So we have the City of Lakes Rotary Foundation account. This is funded by your gifts. So we receive gifts from you all, from all of us. And then those gifts go out to the community, both uh, locally and internationally. Um, we are on track to meet our fundraising goal of $91,000. Uh, Bob Baker will talk more about that, but thank you all for your generosity. My figures, you know, in accounting, you always look back. So I'm still um, stuck in November. So these figures are not going to be as current as uh, Bob Baker's. But as of November 30th, we have spent nearly uh, $105,000 in grants that have gone to local and international groups. Um, and 30,000 of that, of course, is uh, due to the generous gift from Joyce Agnew. But I'm happy to report that we are within budget. Um, at, as of November 30th, we spent $80,000 compared to the budget of $90,000. And that's all I have for the foundation. I don't want to steal any, anybody else's thunder because I know there's a lot of folks who want to talk about their areas of service. So I'm going to switch to the club account. And this is the uh, account that um, pays for our meetings pays for our social activities and it's dependent uh, well we, and it also pays for the dues that we owe to Rotary International and to District 5950. So as of November 30th, <clears throat> we collected $39,000 in dues, um, which put us on track um, per our budget at that point in time. And I do want to uh, uh, call out a special thanks to Keith Johnson for uh, helping uh, myself and Cindy uh, track um, members' donations and helping members to um, remember that they, that they do owe the, um, their dues. So thank you very much, Keith. Um, our biggest expense for the club, as you might imagine, are the breakfast meetings. Um, we pay for the breakfast, we pay for the space, we pay for the audio visual. But I'm pleased to report that at least as of November 30th, and I believe that will be the case through the end of the year, that uh, we are basically a little bit under budget. So we spent $19,000 compared to the annual budget of $47,000. Uh, 
Um, and as a whole, the, the club account, it, I believe, is on track to have a small surplus by year end. We had budgeted a, um, a modest deficit of $7,000, but at this point in time, we are in the black um, at the tune of $3,000. And I'll give kudos to our president, Scott Benson, for keeping such close track of our meeting attendance and, and connecting with the women's club so that we can keep our expenses on track. Also a big shout out to Jean Johnson and Matthew Prediger and the membership committee for increasing our membership uh, so far this year, which has also brought in more revenue, which has helped to cover the costs of meals. So that is all I have. And thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Sheila. You're doing great work. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, actually, we'll move on to the next slide. If you got them there. No. <laughs> and we'll move to the next one. Oh, and we can move on to the next one. That was actually the club budget, which I didn't know if Sheila would need or not. Yeah. All right, and so our Rotary Foundation goal this year was 115,000. And I'm going to call up Bob Baker, who's gonna talk about where we sit with that. Yeah, go to the next one, Russ. Okay, this is a really easy uh, slide. Um, good morning. You make this all so very easy for uh, Bill Klein and I. Um, we kind of work through it. We've kind of divided our duties over the years. Bill does a lot of the presentation and the organization of the big event, and I kind of do the tracking. And so um, I did throw up the foundation budget just to basically show one thing. You know, we basically get donations from the members of about 115,000. That's both for the City of Lakes Club and for the Rotary Foundation. We get some happy bucks money. And then this is how we spend it. And you can see that we spend of that about 105 or 91% goes to some type of program. And so that's usually a kind of an important number in um, you know, nonprofit world and things like that. You can see that one of the expenses is the Rotary Foundation. And basically if you contribute or allocate your gift to the Rotary Foundation, we send it on to them. Um, and I'm not, I don't think we're gonna have anybody talk a lot about the way they, they deal with the money. But so I just do that up for that. Then I'll flip to the next one, Ross. Uh, okay, yep, that's the same one. Boy. So that's really small, but let me tell you about it. So this is just some the last three years information. Um, the first thing, he's trying to get it there, participation rate. We've had 98% of all the members participate um, for the previous years. We're at 89% right now, and we, which basically means we have seven people that haven't committed yet. And... Um, <laughs> And, and Doug is not one of them, all right? I would have called him out right now. Um, but, but it, you know, every year we have, you know, the last two years we've had people that have, a few people that have been unable to commit any funds and that's fine. And um, the, the people that are left, they'll just realize after a time that I'm relentless and won't give up. And so they'll tell me something at some point. Um, as Sheila mentioned, we have a 90,000 internal goal, but 115,000, including the Rotary Foundation. And that's been our, our goal for the last few years. Right now we're sitting at 118,000 of total pledges. So we've made our goal in pledges. And it's all because of you. And that does not include Joyce's big $30,000. We've kind of tucked that off to the side because it sort of wasn't part of the norm. Um, uh, we also have, um, um, how it's broken out, you can't see the next, but about 75% of donations do go to the City of Lakes Foundation and about 25% have gone to the Rotary Foundation over the last several years. Um, one thing that's really wonderful about the members here is so far this year, 55% of the people that have pledged have increased their pledge from last year. So thank you all for that. That really makes a difference that we have new members and members that leave and all that kind of stuff. Um, so far, we've collected 68% of the dollars this year. So my next plug is just that, 
you know, we'd love to get everybody to, you know, if you haven't paid, just pay by May, you know, but you'll probably hear from me because that's what I'm going to do. Um, we've literally collected 99.9% .9 of the pledges the last previous two years. So this is an amazing group that what people commit to, they follow up on. And um, actually, we had a, just one person each year that just for one reason or another couldn't make their pledge financially, and that's fine too. And then I do just list at the very bottom the special extra donation of um, that Joyce gave us of thirty thousand, which I'm kind of just putting on top of all that. So, any quick questions? Oh, don't no way. <laughs> so yeah, I can go through this too. David Wheeler says, "What is the status of our Paul Harris members?" I've been a member of clubs that have aimed for 100% participation. That is the key to the Rotary Foundation International. You know, I'll make one comment on that. You know, we, we actually have a very high percentage of that, but I, I know last year we had gotten a special gift and I think that a whole bunch of people that hadn't reached Paul Harris had reached it. So I think the percentage is extremely high yeah. right now. Is that true, Scott? Scott's shaking his yeah. that so I think we're, we might probably just have a few new members that aren't. So that'd be a very high percentage. Other questions? There was a comment about just, uh, if you have an employer who has a match program, ask mm -hmm. about that. Otherwise that was the only question. Yeah, thank you for that. There are probably a dozen of our members that have some type of match program that just you know piles on top of this. So, okay. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Bob, and really good work, everybody, uh, but particularly Bill and Bob, thank you for all the good work that you do. Next, Jean with our membership committee. So you re may remember these slides from at the beginning of the year. Uh, the membership committee has two basic goals. One is to have a great experience for existing members. So you wanna stay and bring your friends. And the second goal is to increase membership. So next slide, so far at this year, we have four new members uh, and at least one of them is here. Uh, Lynn is with us as a new member today and there's probably more on that. Um, <clears throat> Lynn, Sandy, Andrew Hoffman and David Wheeler who is actually rejoining us. But so we are certainly within um, Sight of reaching our goal of 95 members between uh, me and our fabulous membership magnet, membership magnet Matthew, who's also working on attraction. So, in terms of increasing membership, um, I just want to remind people that a lot of these things are ongoing. Uh, we think it's really important to be sure new members feel very engaged very quickly. So we work with them to find out what their interests are. We have an individual conversation to connect them with the committees that might be of interest. And something we've started doing this year is having a reception so they can get to know each other and know who else is new. Because if you're coming into the room, you don't really know who else is new. Um, we also uh, try to, the, some of the information Scott gave was about the annual survey, so we try to keep a pulse on what's going on with people, and we check in with low attenders. So if somebody's not coming to meetings, we just want to check in and let them know they're missed and uh, understand if there's something going on that we as a club can support them with. And we're, uh, we always are looking for a variety of ways to engage. Many people love coming to the morning meetings. For some people, especially with younger kids, that can be harder. So we're encouraging people always to look for uh, committee work or socials or particularly service work is of interest to a lot of people coming in these days. So uh, engaging in a way that works for you. Next slide. Uh, so increase membership. Um, one thing we did this year so far was an alumni event. So we went back to look at all the uh, former exchange students and their um, hosts who uh, had hosted them and try to find them. It's remarkably hard to find them. So now at least we have a database of who those people are and how to reach them. And uh, we haven't, we didn't have a lot of success this first year, but hopefully we can do that um, next year um, and keep that going. So it becomes part of who we are is to stay in touch with the people who have been part of our club and various different ways. 
We are working on a marketing project uh, to understand what it is, is that makes City of Lakes uh, unique and how to put that in words so we can uh, start doing some publicity around that. We're looking at ways to reach out to people, whether it's through LinkedIn or um, various radio stations, et cetera. So we're looking at trying to do some new things with doing some promotional stuff. And we're looking at targeted recruitment. So our next project is about um, really targeting some people that we'd like to have join our club. And so the next slide is about that. That's on your table is the audience participation portion of the program. You'll find uh, pieces of paper and pencils this time that are guaranteed to work unless you break them. Unlike the pens that I brought last time that didn't really work for anybody. So the questions are, when we are looking as a club, who would you like us to target? What are professions that you feel like fit in with the City of Lakes culture and, and their interests? So who are people that it would benefit them to be part of our club? So what are those professions? Number two is who are people and organizations you'd like to know? What do you think of as somebody, wow, I'd really love to have them in my Rotary Club. And then number three is people that you know. Who would you like to see that you know already that's in our club? So the idea with that is we've got these great speakers coming up um, who might be interested in learning about those speakers. So I, one of the things I think about when inviting people, um, although we should really hear from people like Scott who are award winners. So the idea is, it's not that you're asking for something. The idea is that you're sharing what we have going on here with uh, people that you may know. So I'm gonna let you write on that for a minute. And I'll just finish up with the last slide is that membership really is about everyone. The membership committee, I can assure you, is working really hard to support our existing members and bring in new members. And the way that you can get involved with, the, with this in, as a member is continue being welcoming. This club really hangs its hat on being welcoming to new members. Keep that up. Um, also look for people who you're not seeing. If there's people that aren't here, reach out and find out what's going on with them. Let them know that we miss them and wanna see them here. Third thing is um, look at the upcoming programs. We've got the mayor of Minneapolis coming. Surely somebody you know would be interested in being with us in the same room with Jacob Fry and asking him some questions. So who might that be? and invite them, let them know about it. And the fourth thing is, is let the membership committee know, which is Matthew and I, Matthew and me, um, who you would like to have in our club. So if there's somebody that you'd like to have, but you maybe don't know them and you need some help in reaching out to them, let us know and we will help you with that. So any questions about membership or what we're up to? Okay, keep writing and uh, just leave the cards on the table when you're done. And people at home, please email me your ideas, your responses to those questions. It's gene at johnsonlc.com. Or uh, uh, can they put it in the chat room? Do I have a way of, okay. So you can also put it in the chat room and it will magically show up for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gene. And thank you, Matthew. You're doing great work. Uh, next, vocational services, Jonathan. Thank you. <laughs> Do I have a click? Can we just go one? There we go. Let's just stay there. Uh, well, good morning. Um, and good morning to everyone at home. Uh, I am the chair of the vocational service committee and I wanted to give you a snapshot here and maybe we'll will we share the slides after the meeting sure. circulate them there's a little bit more detail but I, I don't have a lot of time so um, I'd say our group uh, our group is um, focused on member development um, 
as an example, those monthly peer groups are outstanding. If you haven't attended one, uh, please join next Thursday morning. Um, very interesting topics, good discussion. So member development, professional networking, that was a big ask for people on, on why they join and, and um, why they wanna be part of the club. So we're, we're looking at um, some new ways of doing that. We're looking at planning an event at this space with this great room over here, uh, one of the evenings, probably now in February, we'd initially thought about it in January, but with, with, um, with the COVID, maybe we'll push that out. Um, and that'll be, a, uh, one of the goals we have there is, is maybe getting the six Minneapolis clubs and, and even inviting some of our past speakers, community partners, and just having an hour to mingle in there and connect. Uh, and then the third is there's a service component to our group. So that would be the mentoring, that would be the junior achievement uh, work that we're that they're kicking off here this next week, uh, the JA Launch U. So there will be opportunities for us to mentor others. Where, and, and what we find is that there's an opportunity there to, um, you know, as you're mentoring people, you yourself learn as well. And then we're going to have Dunwoody mock interviews on February 2nd. And there's there's uh, a goal of trying to have 38 of their students. Um, so we, we have a need for quite a few people, I think 15 to 20. There's a slide on that. You can contact Chris Morris if you're interested in doing that. So that's a snapshot, but my ask is if you have ideas, we're very, you know, we, we, um, we're very receptive to hearing ideas about uh, networking opportunities, um, mentoring opportunities. So please, um, please reach out to us. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you everybody on Vocational Services Committee for doing your great work. Uh, international service, I think Bill, we have online. Yes, yeah, good morning, everybody. I'll try to make mine brief because I wanna leave time for Kelly, I know we're running out of time. But uh, I just wanted to start off by saying I'm really glad that the International Service Committee can uh, use the budget allocated from the Board of Directors to really promote the Rotary values around the world. So we have 26,500 and we've committed most of that money. The big thing is uh, item number two, there are 21,000 that we've funded nine projects in six countries. And I think all of those projects we're funding are within the District 5950 and that we've got great cooperation between our club and other clubs. We support each other's programs so we can maximize those contributions uh, into the uh, foundations, both international and the district funds. So uh, when we go to the next slide. No, not that, back one up. There's highlighting the Rotary Community Corps. You've heard about this before, and it's been a great program where uh, the City of Lakes is sponsoring a, a group of engineers from Engineers Without Borders, and we formed the Rotary Community Corps uh, with the International Service Committee being the advisor, and we started right off with a school, a $112,000 Rio Zulu school in Guatemala. And uh, with the, both the co cooperation of uh, members of the Engineers Without Borders, as well as our key members of our International Service Group, we were successful in getting a $30,000 district grant to. Uh, fund a portion of that school. It's the kitchen and latrines. So the next slide will give you a little more details about the project. Uh, in Rio Azul, uh, that's a 2000 person community and they do have elementary and middle schools now, but they didn't have a designated high school uh, and they were trying to meet within an elementary school and that situation didn't work. So next slide. That's the site of the new school. And that was some uh, assessment being done initially. Those pits were dug in the corners of the building so that they could determine what the soil conditions were for the design. Next slide is uh, some pictorials of the completed school that the that, uh, place on the right, that actually the community did their own little mock-up of the school. And uh, so you really get more community involved. The next slide is a layout, uh, a plan view of the classroom. There's seven classrooms, there's two administration 
uh, rooms, uh, the kitchen and latrines to the left side. Uh, those were what our district grant funded. And then the, uh, the big area in the middle is kind of their athletic sports area. So the next slide, uh, just to touch on the funding, uh, we really, really blanketed, uh, reached out to 23 other Rotary clubs for contributions. And we were successful in getting $15,000 from 14 other clubs. Uh, nine of those clubs were within District 5950. Two were outside of, uh, were within Minnesota, but outside our district. And there was one in Kentucky and two in Brazil. And thanks to John Vandermeid for uh, keeping that, that uh, collaboration going with the uh, Brazilian clubs. So uh, we're looking forward to many, many more opportunities to road Rotary Community Corps with future projects. And they're just a, a great bunch of young energetic engineers that we hope we can interest them in Rotary at some future time. So the next slide, I just wanted to <coughs> touch on a couple of past global projects. Uh, this is the uh, Mia Trace uh, $155,000 water distribution project in uh, Mia Trace, Honduras. And uh, this couple of pictures of the local community members helping with actually doing all the excavation for four miles of underground piping. And uh, most of that piping and all the major piping is in and now it's all the smaller piping, the half inch piping that goes to each of the houses. So the next slide is Rob Scarlett's program uh, for the Maine Women's Prosperity Initiative. A couple slides here. Of, and, and that's basically the training they have is the funding of 10 trainers uh, that were chosen uh, community leaders to uh, set up these savings and change uh, programs so that they can instruct the women on how to use their own money to fund their important programs. So right now that we have 20 local savings clubs uh, that contain 300 women and it's going very well and Rob would be happy to tell you more about it. So just in conclusion, your contributions have made it possible for the ISC to fund some very worthwhile projects around the world. And uh, we thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Bill and Rod and everybody on International Service Committee. Uh, Kelly was unable to be with us today, but I just have already highlighted a bunch of the projects that community service have done. Uh, of course, they continue their good work with Bay to Grow. Uh, we had the uh, uh, wonderful Every Meal, or it used to be called the Sheridan Story, continuing. We continue to work with CES. Uh, and you can see also on the uh, Warm Hands, One Hearts, uh, Ray Flower and Roll, Crescent Crow, uh, the Holiday Gift Program, which, by the way, was very successful, even though they lost electricity on the day we were supposed to go wrap at it. Thank you for all your generous contributions to that. They had a very uh, nice haul of gifts uh, that they were able to give. So good work, everybody. We really do appreciate all the work that you've done. This so far uh, has been a great year for me. I hope it's been a great year for you. Uh, next week, uh, we have Sharon Bloodworth coming to talk about the uh, uh, financial markets in 2022. Always a great program. Find out if you need to uh, pull out all your investments or invest more. Uh, and uh, thank you, Ross, uh, uh, for uh, taking over today. You did a great job. You did a great job. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, Ross, for the song. Uh, thank you all for being here today, who braved the meeting, and thank you who are, who are, are online. Uh, and Todd Marshall, thank you very much uh, for your reflection this morning. With that, you all have a great Rotary Week. See you next Wednesday.